Hi, I'm Tyler, and welcome to another episode of my Christian Music Week reviews. Each week I take five releases, be it on CPs or singles, and after I listen to them all week, I come back here and I review them, I share what I think about them. So without further ado, let's get to this week's first release, Riley Clemens' new album, Church Pew. <laughs> Raleigh Clemens, new album, Church Pew. Let's dive into it. So pretty good album here. Stylistically, I definitely have to say, I kind of predict this, the style of this album when I reviewed the deluxe edition of her previous album, Godsend. So as you remember, when I reviewed the deluxe edition, I talked about how she seemed to be incorporating more country elements, and I kind of wondered... Is this the direction Raleigh Clemens is going in? And ultimately, Church View proves that yes, it is kind of the direction Raleigh's going in. We see here on here more country and southern influence. We also see more maturity in Raleigh Clemens' sound by hearing more of a contemporary feel. Kind of a pop contemporary sound here. And some pop rock influences we hear as well here which are often combined with Southern influences. And for that matter, the pop contemporary can also be sometimes blended with country on here as well. Stylistically, there are some upbeat moments and then there are some ballad moments as well. And as for the lyrics here, once again, Raleigh delivers on the lyrics just like she did on Godsend. And as for the lyrics here on Church Pew, Rowie talks about how in the pain of things not going the way she planned, causing her to be weak with doubt, she puts faith in Jesus' love through his sacrificial blood to faithfully be with her, to save her from sin, to feel her pain, protect her, and give her the strength to ultimately have victory over the pain. Up next, Sarah Reeves' new album, Best Days. Sarah Reeves' new album, Best Days. Let's dive into it. So, pretty good out here. Love how upbeat sounding this pop album is. Pretty upbeat for the most part, and the ballad moments are nice too. In addition to pop, we also hear elements of alternative, urban, and pop rock. And as for the lyrics here, so... I would call this, uh, as for the lyrics here, I would first and foremost say this is Sarah Reeves' post-divorce album. This album talks about her divorce and the aftermath. And while I don't agree with divorce, I do have to say I still like the lyrics here. I like how she talks about what led to her and her husband's divorce, and we we see her genuine attempts to try to resolve their marriage before it got to that point. And also, I like too how she talks about God sealing her from the pain of that divorce. And without further ado, let's get to my summary here. On this album, some of the lyrics seem to be written about when her and her then-husband were still trying to work things out with Sarah, wanting her and her and her then-husband to be completely open with each other instead of hiding from each other about their struggles with hurt from self-comparison so they can love each other as they used to. And then some of the lyrics seem to be about the aftermath of their divorce with Sarah talking about the feel about feeling the fear of being alone, but she peacefully trusts in God to, in his grace, restore her free from that, to move on from the pain of the divorce into her best days. Up next, Consumed by Fire's new album, First Things First. Consumed by Fire's new album, First Things First. Let's dive into it. So, pretty good album here. Stylistically, pop rock first and foremost, with emphasis coming on the pop side of that equation. But some noticed rock influence as well here. 
Also, we hear elements of contemporary Southern, including Southern gospel, folk, and alternative. We have some upbeat moments, some ballad moments, and a few moments that I would honestly say kind of fall somewhere in between the two categories there. And as for the lyrics here, love the lyrics here. Lead singer Caleb Ward talks about how God in his satisfying love drew Jesus' blood, redeemed Caleb, free from an unsatisfying past of sinful material pursuits and doubt. For Caleb to surrender his life to follow God's leading and reflecting that love, even in the midst of doubt. As Caleb trusts in God to keep his promises to protect Caleb and, make, and, and miraculously make a way for Caleb even when it seems impossible. Up next, Wolves at the Gate's new cover album, Lost in Translation. Wolves at the Gate's new covers album, Lost in Translation. Let's dive into it. So, pretty good covers record here. And as for what songs Wolves at the Gate covered, they covered Heathens by 21 Pilots, Breaking the Habit by Linkin Park, Sweetness by Jimmy Eat World, Pardon Me by Incubus, When I Was Older by Billie Eilish, Stupid Deep by John Bellion, The Pretender by Foo Fighters, Apocalypse Please by Muse, Diamond Eyes by Deftones, and Attack by 30, Second to Mar 30 Seconds to Mars. Stylistically here, definitely on the heavy side of things for the most part, with an alternative metal sound. There are two ballad moments here, as their cover of John Bellion's Stupid Deep takes on kind of a alternative hard rock ballad feel. And Diamond Eyes, for the most part, Deftones Diamond Eyes, for the most part, takes on an alternative rock ballad feel. But then it gets heavy in the outro, in the metal outro. Vocally here, singing and screaming on every single song. And as for the lyrics here, for the most part, I would assume that the main focus here is on Wolves at the Gate giving their takes on their favorite songs. But if I had to kind of come up with a story in my mind to kind of sum up the lyrical themes, I would give it as this. As for the lyrics here, the lyrics talk about a guy who this girl he used to be in love with compromised herself for fame and money and seemed to expect this guy to follow, which caused him trauma. But this guy is fighting to be free from that while also trying to help the girl to break free from self-compromise to be authentically who she is. And close with him again. Up next, our last release for today. Kanata Small's new album, Bang! Kanata Small's new album, Bang! Let's dive into it. So, pretty good album here, stylistically. The sound definitely lives up to the album name as it's a collection of hard-hitting hip-hop bangers that incorporate elements of alternative, trap, lo-fi, and electronic elements here. Vocally here, Kanata Small leans heavily on the rapping vocals here. And as for the lyrics here, like the hard-hitting lyrics here, and actually kind of connect with the themes of fighting against the odds for your dreams. And as for the lyrics here, Kanata talks about how God in his grace has freed Kanata from sin and fear to rely on God as he works hard to fight to rise above adversity and doubters to victoriously live the dream God made him for, to share through music God's freeing love and peace. Well, that's it for this week. Come back next week for five more releases. If you like what's on the video, please subscribe. We put out videos every Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. Also, do you have any thoughts on today's releases or what I may have said about them? Let me know and add in the comments below. Also, in the comments, you can let me know if there's any awesome releases that came out today that you want to see in next week's video. Also, check out 
this month's edition of the Music Moments Dreams playlist while it's still up today and tomorrow on YouTube and also on Spotify, featuring artists like Brandon Heath, Sidewalk Profits, and others. So you can go and check that out for the next couple of days if you're interested. And a new edition of the Music Moments Dreams playlist, what I've been playing in September, will come out this Sunday, October 1st. So be on the lookout for that. Maybe there will be some good stuff on there that you can play on your drive to and from church this week. And, well, go now. See you next week. Bye.